Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm here with The Legend of Korra episode number 9 and 10 reaction. Okay, uh, the previous two episodes, um, episode number 7, we had um, Korra and like you know, Korra interacting with Asami for the first time properly. You know, we went to their place like you know, like uh, because of the whole chaos in the previous episode uh Marco and Bolin they shifted to Asami's place and this and that everything was like you know going all well and good and until and unless Korra overhears uh, uh Hiroshi that is um, Asami's dad talking uh, about the equalist and him being involved with them now there was like a little thing a little miscommunication misunderstanding you know Korra like you know tries to go and uh tries to uh, what do you call it? Expose him uh, with the help of uh, Lin. I think that was the name of. I I always forget her name. Um, Top's uh, daughter. I think Lin. Yeah, wasn't it Lin Beifong? Wasn't it? Uh, anyways, uh, I'm sorry if I'm wrong. So yeah, we went with we go with them, uh, her and Tenzin, and like you know, after a few trial and error, we actually get him. Uh, he tries to like you know attack us. He tries to recruit Azami into his group. You know he talks about his own like you know past about how the like, you know Azami's mom died this and that. But Azami decided to uh, take the correct uh, path and try to like you know stop her dad. But unfortunately her dad like you know ran away. And yeah that was that. And Asami is now going to Asami Marco and Bolin is now going to live in um, Korra's place. And that was episode number. Uh, seven yeah episode number eight we oh my god episode number eight was wild again tarlock comes in he starts messing everything up you know in the beginning Korra tries to do her own like you know uh independent work with the new team avatar but unfortunately tarlock comes and tries to mess it up he uh he makes a rule a curfew rule and he uh like what can i say like shamelessly uses his power to actually oppress the benders no the non-benders yeah the non-benders which is completely like an you know, opposite to amon what amon is doing and it's equally bad so that was that Korra tries to stop them marco and everyone gets arrested Korra tries to like you know like many things happened Korra tries to go and fight um tarlok on her own but lo and behold tarlok has bug bending and uh, yeah, now Korra is captured. I don't know what's going to happen. Let's see. <laughs> so yeah, let's get started. This is episode number um, nine. Episode number nine. So yeah, mm, yeah, let's get started. So I'll be putting the subtitles in the timer here. Sync it to whichever is your preference. And let's start. Okay, here's the countdown. Three, two, one, go. Like the whole blood bending scene took me by surprise completely in the previous episode. I was not expecting him having blood bending. Now I do wonder where did she he learn it from? Did Katara teach him? Who knows? Yeah. Oh boy. Well, the Avatar's friends are all arrested. <laughs> I think only Tenzin can do something at this point. Great, where are we? Oh my god, he's still using blood bending. I think this guy's time has come. Like, you know, I'm sure, like, as soon as we are somehow able to score, is able to get out of this place, hopefully. <coughs> we'll be able to get him. Well, time to learn metal bending, I guess. This is a similar situation to Toph, isn't it? Inside a metal container. Damn, this is like in the middle of nowhere. Okay, you know what? He, she has enough time to talk with Aang now. She can go into meditation and talk with Aang. Oh boy. <laughs> Wake. <laughs> ah. 
Yep. Cora is kidnapped. Oh, damn. This guy. Wow. Yeah. You know what? This guy is the worst. Yeah, we have to find the avatar. Yep. Come on, I'm sure you'll be able to figure something out, hopefully. Oh yeah, she's still recovering from her injuries, oh boy. Oh yeah, she can metal bend. Damn. Okay, she can metal bend. If she somehow finds out Korra, where Korra is, she can probably get her out of there. Ah, Toph's, that's Toph's um, statue, isn't it? Oh. Oh, he's peeing. Okay. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> oh, God. Hmm. We have an avatar to rescue. Bowling. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Damn, metal bending! Metal bending! <laughs> oh boy, they need to find her here. Oh, come on, calm down. Yeah, she needs to talk with Aang as soon as she can. There you go, you have enough time now, you can do it. All right, here we go. Okay, this is tough. <laughs> Twinkle toes. Come on. <laughs> yeah, that's tough you're talking with. <laughs> Yakone. Wait, who's this guy? Yakon, no Yakone? <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, hmm, mm, true. Wow. Oh, <clears throat> oh no. Wait, oh my god, they're They're going in a completely wrong direction, I think. Like Cora is not underground. Cora is like you know in that middle of the nowhere. 
Oh, op no, that's not Appa. What, what am I even saying? <clears throat> Smell. All right, let's see. There you go. Let's go. Oof. Time to metal bend. That easy. Ah. Oh boy. Well. <sighs> More drama. Oh my god. Gossip? <laughs> Oh no, come on, don't. Oh my god, no! Wait a minute, oh my god. Yo, more drama, what? Okay, here we go. <coughs> okay, there you go. Convenient. We know where to go now. Oh, <laughs> that easy. Metal bending. Works every time. Okay, where are we? Rhythm. Oh. Okay, we need some disguise. Time, time to knock out four or five of them. Or oh, never mind. We could, or we can just take the. <laughs> and good. Oh wait, they, they're gone. Okay, I thought they were going to knock him them out or something. Okay, there you go. Now they're going to knock them out. Time to take some disguises. <laughs> yeah, she's not here. Oh, nice. There you go. I don't think they know where they are keeping. <coughs> oh no. Oh my God. Okay, calm down Marco. There you go. Well, at least we got back. Yeah. Okay, I thank God his, like, his bullcrap is out now. Like, you know, he has been pulling the wool over everyone for so many, like, you know, so much time. And thank God. Like, we have proper evidence now. Time to get Korra back and bring him down. Okay, earth bending, let's go. Yep. Oh. Ha! <laughs> oh, they're ready. <coughs> okay. Ooh. Nice. Oh, that was cool. That was cool. Ah. Uh. 
My God. Oh wait, we're here. Oh no, no, never mind. Okay. Your corner. The Saka, isn't it? Oh. <coughs> oh my god. Except during a full moon. Okay. There you go, that's Saka. Oh, he has his casual way of talking, I love it. He has not changed. <coughs> oh my god, something's going to happen. We saw him bloodbending in the visions. He, he was controlling Saka or something. Oh my god, yeah. Damn, he can bloodbend so many people at the same time? Ang, what are you doing? Oh no, Ang is also. Oh god. Okay, who is this Yakon? <coughs> Shut up. Oh, thank God, someone. Nice! Thank you for talking! Damn, you're a savior, thank all. I'm impressed he had the courage to actually say that. Good, like, you know, good for him. Shut up. Yeah, at least he said. Yes! Thank you. Thank you. Quick, quick, quick. Restrain him. Restrain him. Restrain him first. Oh, but even if you restrain him, he can just blood bend out of it. Oh my god. Okay, what do we do now? Damn, this guy's a full-fledged criminal now. Great, like, good job running away from, like, you know, you'll have to run away from everyone. <laughs> that was no dream. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, this guy, what? Th that guy, okay, anyways, uh, uh, all right. Okay, what? Oh my God. 
<coughs> Damn, blood bending is a really bad skill. Like, if you can control the avatar. Okay, who is this person? Oh! Yes, come on, let's go! Yep, he messed with the wrong person. He messed with the avatar. Who wants to save the world. Okay. Oh no, this thing is very annoying. Like, what do you even do in this situation? Oh my god. Oh no! Oh my god! Oh yes, there you go. Who the hell are you? Yeah, Ang Ang fought Ozai. Like, who do you think you are? You know what? It wouldn't surprise me if if this guy turns out to be Amon. It's the Akone guy. Wow. Oh, Yakon's son. Okay. Oh. Wow, this guy is so. He has a god complex. That will be your mistake. Wait, who is this? Oh, Amon is here. Okay, so yeah, Amon. Okay, I, I said that Amon is Yakone, but it, it it's probably is not. Like he said that Yakone is his dad. Okay. Wait, how can he override the blood bending? Okay, we don't know what that means, but take away his blend bending. Yes. Okay, thank God. Damn, Amon is kind of helping us in a lot of ways. <laughs> Oh no. Oh no, what now? Okay. <sighs> yeah. Nice. There you go. Okay, now act like you are knocked out or something. There you go. Sweet release. Yes. <laughs> nice. Run. Okay. Yeah, Ron, you, you probably should not. Good, thank God. Oh. Well. Oh, 
Oh my god. Okay. Fuck. <clears throat> oh, Naga. Thank God. Hmm. Okay, let's go back. Wow, oh, thank God, she's okay. Well, that was a... <clears throat> yep. Um, Dalek is kidnapped. Oh my god, more drama. Ah, uh, more drama. <laughs> Yo. Uh. Okay, well... All right, that's the end. Okay. <clears throat> hmm. Okay, so this episode, wow. Okay, good. Really good. I liked it because, you know, like, thank God we have one person at least out of our hair, <laughs> which is Tarlock. And uh, yeah, like, my God, this episode, this episode was like basically the, like, one thing I'm really glad about is if, like the whole like you know uh, you know acting is out that everyone knows that Tarlock is like you know is the main uh, not main but kind of the um, sub enemy <laughs> sub antagonist uh, you can say here and <clears throat> even if he somehow is able to I don't know even if he's somehow able to get out of Amon's clutches uh, like you know he won't be able to come back and act as like one of the councilmen. He won't be able to do that. So yeah, it's good. Now, this episode, here uh, we see, um, uh, at the beginning we see Tarlock going to the, that place where he kept Korra confined in like a metal place. And um, that kind of gave Korra the enough time to actually go into meditation she she did not meet ang like you know like ang used to meet um roku but she 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 saw the visions now i don't know if maybe in the future ang will actually come in front of Korra just like roku used to come maybe but <clears throat> you know maybe mm, ang can give her some tips uh, about air air bending mm. She really needs that to uh, learn start learning airbending and now that she can you know like uh, start meditating and like see these visions I'm sure as time as the episodes go on she'll be able to kind of uh, actually talk with Aang and um, Aang might be able to help her out uh, but that's probably in the future episodes not now <clears throat> so yeah okay uh, then like you know we see Tarlock you know using her his um again one of his tricks trying to trick everyone he's like oh the equalist came here and <coughs> they like you know attacked this and that and like i don't know like i don't know what he was thinking when he blamed the equalists because yeah like like how how many days would he be able to uh continue that that type of an acting that type of a play because obviously like everyone would go and attack the equalist and once they get to like you know uh like inter interrogate someone in the equalist they will be able to understand that yeah like the equalists were not the people who captured Korra. it was starlock so i don't know what he was thinking when he like you know actually blamed everything on the equalists he could have just said something else i don't know like you know like something different but anyways, like I guess that was the like you know perfect opportunity to try to blame the equalist and yeah I think that's what he was planning you know like he was planning to like uh, uh, try to use uh, two birds uh, get two birds in one stone like he he got Korra out of the whole scene and at the same time he was also probably trying to plan to blame everything on the equalist and capture them you know take that opportunity to capture them 
<clears throat> it's probably some trying something like that but yeah and then lin comes like you know uh lin comes out lin is like yeah like you know we need to get and bring cora back uh she busts everyone out of prison and <clears throat> she and the the, uh, the new avatar crew goes uh to find um uh, cora uh with tenzin's help as well and Korra takes this time to actually go into her past. Now we see the different, a few like you know, few uh, characters that we already know, um, Ang, Toph, and Sarka. Now it was great to see them again. You know, everyone is as we can remember. Uh, <laughs> I, I feel like Ang became a little more, bit more serious. I feel like you know, age probably made him mature. And <laughs> but there's still that you know that type of a uh, little thing there you know when uh, Toph called him Twinkle Toes he's like come on Toph like I'm 40 years old and I'm the Avatar <laughs> can you please do something about the nicknames and Toph is like nope <laughs> and yeah like <laughs> like that that thing is still inside Aang I saw that you know that little thing and Toph is as always we can see like you know she she doesn't care she she does whatever like you know she feels like doing and that type of like a you know what do you call it like the rough top personality with her and she she's a chief of the police i think at that moment and uh, yeah and then we get to see saka after quite a long while now saka is as we as we can remember how he was saka is just the same he just like <laughs> the way he starts talking in a like in such a casual manner and just starts talking about his boomerang and stuff <laughs> <laughs> Typical Saka. Uh, she, he matured a little bit, but he is as we remember him to be. And uh, yeah, that was that. And like that time was like you know when we were seeing everything, the the whole city was a lot more. Um, what do what do you what can you say? Settled down because Ang was there, Toph was there as the police, uh, Saka was there as, as a councilman, and it, it was I I think that time when we were seeing that that the time period we were seeing in the vision of Korra's vision that was probably the best time period because like you know everyone was there, everyone was like doing their best to uh, like you know bring back peace to the world, and they were being successful. Ang was there to stop anyone, you know, any type of. Uh, bad things happening. Toph was also there to help hang out. Saka was there as like the councilman with his brain, you know, like he he can he can do a lot of things. <clears throat> I'm sure Kora, um, Katara was also probably working behind the scenes or some way or the other. And uh, yeah, it was like, oh, I wonder where Zuko is. I didn't see Zuko here. I hope we probably he's probably somewhere there. And I'm sure he's also doing his own thing, you know. So this was probably the best time period, but then like, now look at this place, you know, like Republic City. Um, we get like a like a corrupt, like a, not corrupt, but like a uh, twisted person like uh, Tarlock who has his own delusional, like, you know, what can I say? Like, you know, ways, like he has his own delusional ways of thinking that, yeah, I'm going to rule this place. I'm going to make this place, uh, like, you know, the best and I'm going to be the king of this place, whatever, like, you know, stuff he was thinking, egotistical ways of, uh, like, you know, uh, doing things his. And <clears throat> that's one person who can basically, like, you know, I don't know, like, use the whole city for its own advantage. He doesn't care. Like, that's Starlog. That's one of the people. Tenzin is okay, but obviously Tenzin is all alone here. And we have those other people, those two or three, two. Two councilmen member who just... I don't know what they're there for. I, for a moment in the previous episode, I thought maybe they were also someone who was bribed by uh, Tarlock. And now in this episode, I think, yeah, maybe not. Because they were also being, like, you know, blood-bended. Tarlock also blood-bended them. And I, I think they, they didn't have any idea what was happening. But and then why did they just, like, you know, like when Tarlock in the previous episode said that, oh, we're going to do the curfew. Why did they raise their hands? Are they that? I don't know. <sighs> Who knows? But anyways, um, so yeah, like th th this is the state of Republic City now. Corruption, like you know, like these type of people, like uh, like if in the leader's seat these type of people are sitting, like Tarlock, then what else is going to happen to the city? Like the city is going to go down. It's very easy if these type of people are actually in the leader pool, like you know, leader seats. So yeah, this that's how Republic City went downhill, I guess. 
and I do wonder what happened to Aang. Like, how did he die? I, I also wonder how did uh, Sokka die? We don't know anything about Toph. Is Toph even alive or not? We don't know. Neither we know anything about um, who? Zuko. Yeah, we don't know anything about Zuko as well. Now, he, so here's what's happening. We know Aang is dead. Uh, we know Sokka is dead. Katara said that in the first episode, I think. First or the second episode. Um, Katara is alive. We don't know whether Toph is alive or not. Uh, we don't know whether uh, Zuko is alive or not. And we don't even know anything about Suki. Like, what happened to her? Suki, did Suki get married with, um, uh, what's, what's his name? Uh, Saka, Saka. Saka or what happened? Like, we don't know. But yeah, I'm sure we're going to get our answers probably in the future when we uh, get more information about them. But anyways, that's something different I'm talking about now. So yeah, uh, we get into, like, you know, we get to uh, the rescue operation of rescuing uh, Korra and uh we get into this underground place marco is as like you know like uh, acting very concerned about Korra. like i can understand why but obviously assam is not happy with that because of that whole revelation in one of the previous episodes you know when that little girl told <laughs> blatantly in front of Korra that yeah Korra likes marco <laughs> uh, and uh, <clears throat> like yeah assam is not happy with that as far as i can see more drama <laughs> my god and um then you know we get that vision of yakon who was captured but at the same time we see him actually blood bending out of that whole situation and now this this really shows how blood bending is like so broken type of an ability like you can just like start controlling people in front of you even if your hands are tired and everything you know like and if and this guy can blood bend anytime which he doesn't even need the full moon so Yakon just uses that and gets out of that whole situation and he was acting all like you know all almighty and everything he was like oh like you know I'm going to get out of this place he tries to get out but you're messing with Anne you know like like the person who actually saved the world who actually defeated the fire lord Ozai who the hell are you huh like, you know like you 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 you're someone who just knows a little bit of bit, bit of blood bending like so obviously Aang sh like, you know, went into his avatar state and just <laughs> just like defeated him just like that and took away his bending power uh, and uh, yeah so that's good but this guy he had a son now for a moment there I thought maybe this guy is uh, Amon or something but now that I think about it like it's kind of impossible for him to be Amon because uh, if he's Amon then he and why is he actually fighting against uh no not he so why is starlock actually fighting against him uh, like you know like it wouldn't make any sense because uh starlock is a mon uh, not a mon sorry yakon's son so it wouldn't make any sense if he is actually a mon so yeah that was like my mistake i, I don't know why it suddenly struck my mind oh, what what if this guy is a mon you know like he doesn't have any bending now so maybe he like you know became some kind of a i don't know like, yeah like i thought it was something like that you know because he doesn't have any bending because ang took away his bending maybe he's trying to take revenge or something he has his own plan that's why he's like wearing a mask and acting as a mod like everything like it's kind of like you know fits so perfectly like uh like you know it it, it i don't know like it, it it fits very perfectly like him being a mon you know i'm talking about yakon being a mon would is something that would very easily fit like he doesn't have bending powers i think yeah and um, like you know and took away his bending powers then he is trying to take like you know some kind of like you know uh, get some uh, huge power he's trying to make like his own kingdom here or something which is something similar that he tried to do before as well as we saw in the flashback so but obviously he is not a mon because yeah, uh, Tarlok is supposed to be a, uh, a, uh, Yakon's son. So it doesn't even make sense if he's Amon. So yeah, he's, he's probably not Amon. We don't know who Amon is. But yeah, probably in the future. We'll get to know. So yeah, we get that little flashback where, like, you know, uh, as I was saying, like, you know, everyone tries to do something, but everyone fails. But Aang is there. Aang helps them out, takes away his bending and Korra gets to know everything 
then comes uh, oh boy and tarlock comes in after that tarlock is like uh, oh what's happening and everyone is like you are the one who captured Korra. tarlock is like what are you even saying why would i do that you know like you don't have any proof <laughs> that guy uh, like you know one of tarlock's servant he's like oh i saw him <laughs> I saw him taking and bam that was it that was it that's all the evidence you needed and when he says that he has blood bending everything was over and like thank god that guy actually had like you know enough bravery like you know I, I I didn't think he would actually say something like props to him good job like you know like you basically you saved everyone <laughs> he basically saved everyone because if he did not say anything at that moment Talok would keep like you know uh, tricking all of them and I don't know what would have happened to Korra but yeah <laughs> good and then <clears throat> you know like uh he blood bends out of that whole situation he is like you know now like a wanted criminal obviously um he goes to Korra, says that ha ah, i'm going to get out of here i'm going to start a new life but surprise surprise amon is here <laughs> oh boy and amon like you know like i, I don't know i feel like <laughs> Amon is actually kind of helping us in a lot of situations like for example in one of the previous episodes he actually took over those uh, those kids bending abilities you know the, those wolf bats or whatever like if they actually kept their bending abilities he, they in the future they would probably become some uh, like I don't know like some kind of a very bad type of people and uh, like he basically kind of stomped their ego at that situation that's by taking away their bending and they're probably going to be like better people in the future uh, now that they don't have their bending uh, so that was that he is kind of like you know uh, what can i say like stewing chaos and killing people that's definitely wrong but here again he actually helps us out like you know we kind of get helped out because of his actions like Korra at least like Korra if Korra actually had to fight against uh, Amon uh, not Amon, sorry, uh, Tarlock, she wouldn't be able to do that. Like, this is like that type of a thing, you know, like one person is advantageous towards the other, and another person is advantageous towards the other. You know, you, you know, those uh, in those games, you have uh, like the element screen fire is like, you know, beats water, water beats uh, earth, and earth beats fire, or something like that. It's something like that because Korra is weak towards. <laughs> Korra is weak towards Tarlock, you know, like because Tarlock can easily blood bend out of it. Um, Tarlock is actually uh, uh, weak against Amon because blood bend doesn't work on Amon, and uh, Korra can probably fight toe to toe with Amon. So it's kind of like that type of like you know like a chart, an affinity chart, <laughs> because. Amon came in and took down uh, Tarlock and took away his bending. Thank God, you know, like no more blood bending. Hopefully, hopefully that this guy doesn't have some son or some daughter or something. That will be a mess. Like you know, if this guy has some children, we don't even know. Then they would have blood bending. That would be another problem. Uh, but anyways, um, so yeah, um, he takes away uh, uh, Tarlock's blood bending. Uh, which helps out Korra in a lot of different, not in a big different way. And now Korra hasn't, won't have to uh, fight with Tarlock, but against Amon, Korra could actually even, like, you know, do some. At least he can, she can run away. If if she tries to run away from um, uh, Tarlock, Tarlock would just blood bend her and stop her. But since this is Amon, she was actually able to take that opportunity, break out of that situation, and that was a really, really cool thing that she did. You know when. Tarlock's uh, when uh, Amon said that yeah electrocute her knock her out and take her out um <clears throat> she used her thing which is a, like you know a non-conductor of electricity to hang which was quite you know like you know uh, impressive like good thinking and she broke out of that situation and again good thinking she did not try to fight against Amon because she is not in a position to fight she's weak she's tired it just runs away good and you know like thank god like she went away from here and thank you amon at least like you know you you kind of helped us out in a way <laughs> you took away tarlock's blood bending which helped us out in a very big way very significant manner i don't know what's going to happen to tarlock after this amon took is taking a tarlock with him i don't know what he's going to do but we'll have to wait for that 
And then yeah, in the end we see like, you know, Naga comes in, Naga takes Korra, helps her out and everyone finds them. Mako is concerned about Korra, Asami is not happy with that, more drama and uh, yeah, and Korra needs some rest now. <laughs> so yeah, that was uh, episode number nine. Okay, let's start with episode 10, just a sec. Just a sec. Um, okay, episode number 10. So let's start. I'll be putting the subtitles and the time right here. Sync into whichever is your preference. And let's get started. Okay, here's the countdown. Three, two, one, go. <clears throat> Hmm. Yep, now we need to deal with Amon. Thank God. <laughs> Amon's basically taking advantage of everything, well, you know, like, he's striking at the correct position at the correct time. <laughs> Is that Marco? Damn! Dude, you have a girl? What the? Oh my god, this guy's confused as hell. He doesn't know what to do, like... I feel bad for Asami, like, what is... Hmm. Ah, he'll, yeah, she'll be fine. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. There you go. Hmm. Oh boy. Yeah. Okay. So. Oh no. Oh, okay. Oh. my god marco you need to make up your mind what is wrong with you yeah um about um mm. Uh, true. Oh my god, <laughs> Oh Dude, you need to make up your mind. Oh my god. Oh my god, Tim's in here. Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> and awkward. <laughs> <laughs> Oogie, that's Oogie, okay. Oogie. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> what the? Oh, this is the, that lady in the council. What? The... <laughs> Who the? I don't. Oh, yo. Um, that was his last deer that anyone could hear. <laughs> What the hell? Everyone's like this. Oh my god, they're going to try to attack him. Oh, nice. Oh! Come on. Okay. Come on, you can do this, Tenzin, even though it's three versus one. Nice. There you go. Good. That's what you get. My god. The other rooftop. Oh, this guy. I don't think so. Great. Thank God. Well, this is not good, but at least Tenzin can actually do something now. You know? Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Great. Oh, this is a summit. You do realize your your daughter is you might be get involved in this. What? Hmm. All right, damn, this is busted. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> there you go. Oh. Yeah. Oh! Kora is like, ah, what's happening? What happened? When I was absent? <laughs> Yo! Asami! Oh my god! Ah! Yeah. Yeah. What? General of the United Forces? Who's that? What? Oh. 
Oh my god. Oh! Oh great. Yeah. What is this, some kind of uh, sleeping gas or something? Go on, airbend, yeah. Nice. Good, there you go. Oh no. Oh my god, there's more of them. Oh no, yeah. Oh great, they have magnets. Yeah. God. Manual capture. I don't think Tencent can actually take care of all of them while protecting the people behind him. This is like a... Oh no, he got captured. Oh great. Okay. I think we need some help here. Oh no. Oh my god, this is a mess. Okay, here we are. Oh! That's nice. Okay. Oh. Oh my god. Oh yeah, he can he can redirect it, I think. There you go. He knows how to bend lightning. Oh. <laughs> okay, that was good. Nice teamwork. Oh no! Okay, there you go. Ooh. Oh! Yes! Nice! Oh! <laughs> she has the moves! Oh! Okay. Okay, nice. Well, I don't trust this guy. Ugh. Oh, no. Well, Lynn is there. No. Is, he, is she still here? Oh my god. Okay, Lynn is here, thank god. Oh no! Her baby! Not, not at this moment. <laughs> okay, yeah, just, just take her inside. Oh my god, this is a very bad time. Okay. I think Lin would be able to handle them, hopefully. I don't know. Oh, but they have quantity with them. Oh my god, another ship. 
Yeah, they have a lot of people with them. Okay. And she uses metal bending, which is one of the, you know, which is conductive. Electric will flow through it. Okay. Oh no, that's what I was saying. It's conductive metal. Oh! Wait, what? Damn! Yeah, these are Aang's grandchildren, so... Oh my god. <laughs> Wait, what? Damn, this... What the... <laughs> wow! <laughs> he has his own way of fighting, you know? Okay, thank god everyone's here. <laughs> yeah, using fart bending. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Fart bending. <laughs> okay. Oh, wait. Okay. Okay. So, what will be his name? <laughs> this kid. Yeah. <laughs> Rohan. Okay. Rohan. That's like an Indian name. <laughs> yeah. We have a lot of people here who are called Rohan, you know, in India. All right, let's go. Oh boy. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. True. That's true. You? Who is the United Forces? Oh, is he talking about Zuko? I think so. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Oogie. <clears throat> My God, this is a. Oh my God, they're following them. What the? Okay. Okay, yeah. 
Yeah, they, they won't be able to hold them for long. Okay. Who? Oh, that guy. Mustache guy. Oh, nice! Naga! Damn! Just whack him away. <laughs> wow, this <laughs> Naga is. Okay. Okay. Oh no. Come on, metal bending. Yes. Oh my god, she's going to go in there. Wait, what's she doing? Oh, metal bending it, the whole thing. Okay. Wow. Oh my god. Oh, come on, onto the other ship. Yes, nice. Okay. Okay, after getting this one, she needs to jump onto um, Oogie again. Oh no, oh no, oh no. Oh no. Oh my god. Fuck. <laughs> I, oh my god, they're going to take her bending away now. And more drama. Oh. oh no, they're gonna take her bending away. Shut up, go to hell. Oh. God damn. Wait, who's this? Who's this? Ah! Wait, what? Also, this is the United For- My God! Yo, look at that army! Wait, that- Who is that? That's definitely not Iro. I think it's someone else, like with the same name as Iro. That's the end. You know what? It wouldn't surprise me if that kid, uh, uh, no, not kid, sorry, if that man, the one who they called General Iro, turns out to be um, Zuko's son. Because you know, like we know Zuko uh, respected Iro so much. Like, who knows, maybe he, uh, you know, gave um, uh, his son Iroh's name. That wouldn't surprise me. Like, Iroh was one of the, you know, like, the, one of the only people who he trusted. And Iroh was one of the most important people in, 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 in his family, like, you know, for him. So it wouldn't surprise me if that, uh, that kid, uh, not kid, like, I'm not only a kid, uh, that, that, that person, that man, turn, who, it turned out to be uh, Zuko's son or something. It won't surprise me, but we'll have to wait. Uh, I'm sure we're going to get our answers. <laughs> like you know, when he said General Iro, like you know, I was thinking, wait a minute, 
General Iroh, where have I heard that name? Because, <laughs> you know, because Iroh has been always, like, you know, that that person, like, we've always seen that funny, uh, like, you know, that funny uh, person, like, tea leaving that uh, old man. That's that's General Iroh all the time. And suddenly seeing, you know, this, this type of a young, you know, man being called General Iroh, for a moment, I actually forgot who Iroh was. <laughs> And then I, I remembered, I was like, wait a minute, General Ilo seems a little bit different here, I think. And <laughs> yeah, that's obviously that's not our diary we know. I'm sure that's someone else. But um, my guess is that's probably Zuko's son or something. Think so. I don't know. Maybe. Because that would make the most sense, you know, like Zuko uh, giving his son uh, Iroh's name. So, yeah. I'm sure we'll get our answers. We'll have to wait. Okay, so this episode here, um, we <clears throat> are in the middle of, uh, not in the middle of the battle, but in the beginning, we the, that whole scene of uh, them coming back to the, uh, you know, the, the temple, and uh, you know, Tenzin coming back. Korra is still kind of healing. She wakes up. Has a little me has a little meal talks about, uh, to everyone about what happened about Yakon and <clears throat> you know how Tarlock is uh, related to Yakon and this and that everything was happening and at the same time excuse me at the same time there is a little bit a little sprinkle of drama you know the whole situation with oh, Asami uh, Marco and Cora now here's the thing um. I don't know like I understand that like how old is Marco even I don't even know like I understand they're basically teenagers so it is probably I don't know but still you know like I was going to say that it is he's probably being confused of his own feelings but this is not fair for Asami you know like I don't know like what to feel about this like the whole thing with Marco like I feel like he needs to sit down and actually think like what he himself wants to do like as far as i remember not remember but as far as i know he already uh, rejected cora and you know like he is like yeah like you know what we like he himself said to cora that i and asami are together you know like i cannot uh give you know uh what do you call it respond to your feelings back like, because me and asami are together like he himself said that and now this is what is happening and like i feel like the the ones who are like this is basically the like you know like bolin and asami just getting involved in these two people like you know, two persons uh like you know confusion like cora and marco their problems their like you know the, their weird relationship is actually affecting both bolin and asami bolin has been able to get out of that quite easily and i'm, I'm glad for him you know like he is not you know sad or anything like he he's just like yeah you know what like i kind of liked cora before but now i have moved on you know i know that and it's i, I I'm, I'm happy for him you know like he is actually not getting involved in this whole teenage drama like <laughs> like god and i really hope that asami i don't know what's going to happen with them like who mark is going to end up with asami or cora but i really hope like you know like asami if he does not end up with Asami. I really hope Asami is able to like, get out of this mess soon as soon as possible because nothing's wrong with Asami. Asami is doing like you know trying to do her best. She like from the uh, beginning episode we see that she really liked Marco and she is being true to that up until now this episode and like Marco's just dilly dallying this and that. Oh, I like Asami. No, maybe I like Cora again. Maybe I like Asami. Like he's just i don't know i feel like he's just like just wobbling around from one thing to another one thing to another and this is like the person who's getting the most affected here is asami because she doesn't know what to do like marco kind of rejected cora as well so i think cora is a lot more uh what can i say comfortable with this situation she's not being that much affected but asami is basically hanging by a thread like marco is not even making anything clear to her like you know he he's just like dilly dallying and i really don't like that you know like like i like if this was like some kind of a you know like 
what can I say? Like those type of harem anime where there's like this one blunt, dense main character who doesn't even realize what the hell he is doing. You know, like th this would have been a different case. You know, like I would have just laughed at this whole situation and I would just be like, you know what? This is that type of an anime. Something like this is supposed to happen. The main character is supposed to be this dense and you know, like that's why he's doing that. I would have just laughed it away. But this is not that. This is like this is like a part of Avatar. Like you know, this is like the legend of Korra. So seeing something like this here is really kind of weird, and I don't know why, but I feel like Marco really needs to get his things together. Just sit down, you know, like and actually ask himself what the hell he wants to do, and do that. Like don't keep Asami hanging. Like what are you even doing? You you're basically hurting her. And I, I really don't like that, you know, like this is this is this is a mess. He needs to get this sorted out as soon as possible. And like Korra also has kind of accepted, like you know, in one of the previous episodes we saw, Korra herself kind of accepted that yeah, you know what? Like like Marco is really not interested in me, so I'll I'll move on. Try to move on. She has also kind of accepted that. But Marco's the one who's just like, you know, like just wobbling around from one person to another, one person to another. And this is actually making it difficult for both Asami and Korra to actually realize what the hell they are supposed to do. Korra, now I'm sure in the upcoming episode, Korra herself will be confused as to what she should do here. You know, because like it would take a little bit of time for her to actually get the feelings away for Marco. But Marco's not getting giving him that her that time. She's just like you know he's he's just kind of wobbling around. Like what does Cora do in this situation? And Asami is at the same time being like you know is hanging by a thread. Like this is a mess. Like I don't know why, but like I'm quite curious. Like I have to say, like I I really like all the characters in this show. Like obviously the good characters. I'm not talking about Amon and Dalog. Those are very bad people and obviously they are antagonists we are supposed to not like them so i'm not talking about them but among the good people you know the the, the uh, our allies the good cast you know i i like each and every character but i don't know but i i am really not so sure about marco i really don't like him like now this is just my like you know opinion you know i don't know what everyone like who watched this show felt about this whole situation but for me i really am not liking marco at all like in the beginning few episodes he was kind of cool i was like yeah you know what he's like a good guy but now i don't know what to feel i i really don't like him at all like the, the things that he's doing one after the other like i understand that it's just him because he's a teenager i guess he can make mistakes but don't just like you know keep hurting the people who's like you know like Asami really loves him and he's just like you know just doing his own thing. God damn, I don't know. Like yeah, this is just my opinion, you know. Like I really don't like Marco at all. I I don't know. I don't like him. <clears throat> but anyways, enough about the drama, the drama section. <laughs> yeah. Um. So that was that, and then like you know the whole thing with uh the equalist attacking all the council members get uh you know captured and then like you know they also try to take tenzin away but tenzin as we can know like you know tenzin is like you know an airbender he can probably handle himself he like you know was stopping everyone and uh, at the same time like you know he would have gotten captured if not for the new avatar like you know team when they come in and help tenzin out um, I was very impressed seeing uh, Asami fight, you know, like that was impressive and as she said, she knows judo. <laughs> she knows judo and that's why, you know, like she was able to you do those moves and using that, like, you know, that gloves, everything was like, you know, helping, like, you know, what can I say, advantage just for her. She just whopped everyone and just like <laughs> defeated all the enemies in that situation and good for her. And... <clears throat> Yeah, and very closely Tenzin was rescued and uh, yeah, like everything kind of became fine. But then they re like, you know, they realized that everyone is uh, the Republic, uh, the Equalists are going to their temple. Now, here's one thing that I actually read that moment. I was thinking, why are they targeting the temple you know, where, where their family is? I do not understand why they're doing that. But then one thing that uh, Lin says in the previous, uh, like, uh, in the future portion, actually makes me realize why they were targeting the temple. 
He says that you people are you are the only airbenders left in this world. We need to protect you. And that's when it struck me. I was like, oh, that's why they were targeting the temple. They were actually trying to take away the airbending, like, you know, from, from, from them, you know, like seal their bending that they, they were trying to do that. And that's why they also target, start, decided to target Tenzin as well, you know, because he's also an airbender. They tried to take Tenzin's bending away as well. And at the same time, they would also go to the temple and take away all the kids' bendings because they are also, like, you know, airbenders. So by that way, they would have probably met uh, airbenders completely extinct from this world. That was their plan. Part of their plan, at least. So that's why they, like, targeted the temple. I realized that after that when, when Lin said that. But anyways, um, they're targeting the temple. Lin is there. But... As, as you know, like the, they, it's very kind of disadvantageous for Lin because these people are using electric and Lin is a metal bender. So if, as we saw, you know, Lin used the metal bending to try to capture one of the guys, but he just like, you know, zapped her using that. And it's very disadvantageous towards for Lin. So even like, you know, even though that was the case, he stopped everyone. And also at the time, like, you know, the baby was also coming, like, at, at this moment. And everything was, like, you know, everyone was at, was at edge. In comes the kids. You know, the three kids. <laughs> um, okay, what was their name? Just a sec. Iki, Jinora, and Melo. Okay. Iki, the, 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 the two girls, the one with um, the two buns in their head. Her name is Iki. Uh, the other girl... With, with with a little like you know like that hairstyle um she is jinora and milo is the boy <laughs> uh, okay <laughs> milo's <laughs> i loved when they were like you know fighting and these are ang's grandchildren you know like obviously and they are being trained by tenzin so that was fantastic milo just you know walked everyone using his new technique <laughs> Using farts to his advantage. That's a very unique way of fighting. My god <laughs> Okay, and yeah, they just like you know completely whopped everyone and good like that was really great and Tencent came in uh, New boy was born. His name is Rohan now Rohan as I said like Rohan is a very common name uh, in India you know, in my place and uh yeah like that's just it you know i was actually was surprised when she suddenly said your name will be rohan i was like wait a minute rohan and yeah that's good you know like we have a new uh, family member um we're probably going to see him grow up as well you know as time goes so yeah and <clears throat> Okay, that was that, and then everyone's like, yeah, everyone's going to attack us, what do we do? Um, uh, Tenzin and her, his family, they decided to take um, the Sky Bison, I forgot the Sky Bison's name. Oh, it was something called... Anyways, I forgot. Um, I'm sure we're going to, you know, they're going to mention it in the future episodes as well. But yeah, uh, gets on the Sky Bison, and they, and, you know, the, uh, Tenzin's family, and Lin as a bodyguard goes with them uh, Cora is able to somehow also get out of the situation taking his her friends with her her the new team avatar alongside Naga Naga just walks up walks one of the people <laughs> who tries to attack them <laughs> that was good and uh, yeah Cora is fine Cora and his friends are fine but the thing that is not fine is Lin where Lin tries to like you know stop one of the, he she did that did destroy one of the ships which is a very impressive feat but the other ship like you know like uh, it caught her off guard when someone just popped out and like you know captured her so like she as she said like you know she helped Tenzin get out of that whole situation and now she's captured and her bending is taken away and yeah like as Milo says that she's a hero. <laughs> But yeah, her bending is gone, so she won't be able to fight. I don't know what she's going to, she'll probably like, you know, kind of carry on with her own um, things as like, you know, normal person, as a normal police officer, most probably. Uh, so 
Yeah, I, I doubt she's going to stop, you know, even after this. Like her bending is taken away, but I'm sure she, she's going to continue being uh, the police chief and just, like, you know, <laughs> trying, like, I'm sure she'll try to, like, you know, get more criminals and, like, after, after everything is, over, like, you know, over, you know, after this whole war is over, you know, after hopefully peace comes back, uh, I'm sure she's going to go back to his, to being the police chief and, you know, just stop criminals and capture criminals. And because she's, she's not the type of a lady who's going to stop just because her metal bending is taken away. But yeah, like, but thank, hopefully, like, everything becomes okay. Because the United uh, Forces, I think that's what they call it. Yeah, the United Forces, they're on their way. For a moment, I actually thought that would be Zuko. You know, like, Zuko was going to come. Uh, it does seem like it's like a Fire Nation thing, you know, because, like, we see these huge ships just coming in. And... I, I'm pretty, I'm, I don't know, like, I'm guessing this is somehow related to Zuko because the, the person who's like the commander, I think, is called General Iroh. And I, I, I don't know, like, I feel like this is somehow related to, somehow related to Zuko because it's, it's either Zuko's son, you know, not either, it, it must be Zuko's son. Like, otherwise, who would even name their ch child Iroh? Like, I, I think... Zuko is the only one who would probably name his child Iroh. Unless and until Iroh has a kid. No, that, that's weird, you know? Like, no, no, no. Like, you know, Iroh naming his son Iroh, that will be weird. So, no, it's definitely... <laughs> for a moment, I thought maybe this is Iroh's son. And then I realized, no, like, which father gives his son name, his own name? Like, you know, like, <laughs> he's called Iroh. He gave, I'm sure he definitely did not give his son, son, like, you know, the name of Iroh, so it's definitely not Iroh's son, like, you know, son, like, uh, so, yeah, like, maybe someone who's related to Iroh, maybe his, I don't know, some family member or someone, who knows, but the one thing that would actually be, what can I say, hmm. uh, like, under, not understandable, but it would, it, it's very, what can I say, um, it has, a, like, a lot of chance of happening is that this is Zuko's son, like, Zuko respected Iroh, so, you know, he gave his son Iroh's name. But we'll have to wait for that. We'll see in the next episode what this actually is. And, uh, mm, yeah, like, I, I was talking about, like, <laughs> that guy being Iroh's son. But I, like, I, you know what, I, like, for a moment, I actually thought maybe Iroh got married after that or something. But it, 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 I don't know, like, I feel like I would probably ne never get married after this because he, you know, he lost his son, you know, Marco, if you guys remember. So, I don't know, like, maybe he got married later on and, yeah, even if he got married and even if he has son, like, you know, I'm talking about Iroh, he definitely would not give his son his own name. That's impossible, like, that's weird and unusual. So, this is definitely not someone who's related to Iroh. Maybe someone related to Zuko. Anyways, I'm thinking too much about this. I'm sure we're going to get our answers in the next episode. So, I'll, I'll just wait for one week. So, anyways, that's it. Thank you guys for watching. This was my reaction to, uh, uh, to <laughs> The Legend of Korra. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to press the like button. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. Or you haven't subscribed. And comment down below anything you want to say. Anything you want to let me know. And I'll check them out. So, yeah, that's it. Okay, wait a minute. Let me check how much, uh, how many episodes does, does this season have? This season one or book one? Okay, 12 episodes. Like, two more episodes after this. So, next week, I'll be ending book one. All right. So, yeah. So, see you guys in the next week with two more episodes of The Legend of Korra. So, until then, goodbye and have a nice day.